In today's video, we are going to be talking about whether or not it's super important to have a niche for your reselling business. I'm Trey, I am a full-time reseller. I am Tyler, part-time reseller. And before we get into it, you do have a t-shirt? I do have a shirt. Sorry, I can't. I have plans with my dog. Which is basically our life, yeah, essentially. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I just want to sit on the couch and hang out with my dogs. Which they wish they were in the video right now, but they're not. <laughs> okay, so this video actually came to us because we did a TikTok like a week ago or something like that about niche and the comments were quite funny. There were a lot of people in the comments that supported having a niche and then there were a lot of people in the comments just like us who sell everything and anything. And I think that it's a topic in the community that's pretty hotly debated and I thought it was about time that we kind of just shared our thoughts. Yeah, I think it's gonna we're gonna run a pro and con list of having niche versus not having a niche and see let you guys decide for yourself. Yeah, so stay to the end for our final thoughts where we kind of break down exactly where we stand and how we feel, but let's just start with pro con. So do you want to start with pro or con? Let's start with the pros, the positives that as we see that for finding a niche. Okay. So the, the first one that we came down is that you're going to have a better knowledge base and you're going to find more of those hidden gems right items so for us our niche i guess you could say would be pants and we tend to find more brands that people wouldn't know about that are just kind of under the radar one that comes up top of my mind that a lot of people don't know about would be like the upside from revolve it goes for around 50 dollars, and pretty much no one i know has ever sold it we also are really great with soft surroundings pants and other things like that we know Bruno Cuccinelli. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. know exactly what we're looking for and it doesn't take us a lot of time to figure that out. It doesn't take us a lot of research. We just, we just know. So if you have a niche and you're really good and you know exactly what you're looking for, you're going to know more than just even the average reseller because you just have a ridiculous knowledge base of this specific category, which is an amazing advantage. I, th I think that's a, a significant pro. For, for finding a niche and just having the experience and, and the practical knowledge. Next is because you have that knowledge, you're allowed to go faster through the, through that category. You, so you, you know what you've looked at in that store already. You know what you're looking for in that category. It just allows you to target laser in yeah. on, on that category. Yeah, so it's in and out of the thrift store. As we all know, our sourcing can be time consuming. So being able to focus on one category, go in, go get that category and then get out. You can go to more stores and you just can go way quicker. So that, that's related to it. It's just, it lets you hit multiple stores in a, in a trip, five, six, however many stores are in your area because you're only spending that limited time in that store looking at that one section. The next, uh, it's easier for listing purposes. And I don't really have any experience on this. <laughs> As I don't do any of the listing, I just sit here on the couch watching TV while she lists. Uh, but it, it does allow you to just have the setup just how you want it for that one category. Yeah. As you may know, uh, if you have different categories or different things you're listing, they require different setups. So if you're having a hanging item, that's going to be in one spot. If you have a lay down item, it's going to be in a different spot. Breakable items, you might want that in a different spot all different things. So you're going to have different setups for different things. If you only sell one type of item, you've got that setup all ready to go. You don't have to change it. You don't have to move it. It's just quickly moving through that category. And plus you're going to be so good at doing it that it's just going to be so much faster. You're going to have all of those, you know, defined words that you use over and over and over again to describe that category all set and ready to go. So way quicker. Yeah. The next is if you have a curated store or a curated closet, you're going to attract people that are focusing in on that category. So you're gonna get, a, if you sell shoes, you're gonna get a lot of sneaker heads. If you sell DVDs, you're gonna have that that audience. It's just, it, it's, it's more catered to one demographic of buyer. So I would imagine, and there's no way for us to have the numbers on this, but it would lead to a higher conversion rate on the people that come to your store. Yeah, and you can also be sending out things to kind of promote that. So say you're a bookseller and you can put in a little note in your package saying, hey, I sell books and I list new ones every single day. Make sure that you come back and check out for more. So things like that will really help engage that audience. And also, as we all know, the algorithm gets catered to the type of people that are purchasing from you. So the more you have of the same type of buyer, the more the algorithm is going to understand who to show your items to. So that I think that can be a real benefit. And related to that, I think that also is going to lead to more repeat buyers, which for a lot of people is a rare occurrence. Thankfully, we have a, a few people that we love that support us on YouTube and come back to our store. Uh, but not everyone has that, especially if you're a generalist. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing, which I think is just, 
for peace of mind is that if you really enjoy something, if you really love books, you really love DVDs and video games, and you're passionate about something, uh, you're going to be an, an expert off the bat because it's something you enjoy. It's going to allow you to improve on your hobby and something that you truly enjoy and, and facilitate that. Not necessarily an addiction, but that's something that you're passionate about. Yeah, I mean, it allows you to kind of search for those things that you're looking for anyways because you love them, but also make money while you're doing it. So that's a pretty cool way to just kind of make an excuse to shop for what you love. I think that's pretty awesome. I think, I think that's what I was getting at rather poorly. <laughs> okay, but as you all know, we're generalists. So why? What are the cons? So for the, the cons, the first is you're limiting your opportunities. So we did a video not too long ago where we went to the same store for DVDs every day for two weeks. And we, we did improve on our DVD collection, uh, but it was one or two a day. And that's not enough for a business. So you're losing out on that volume of items if you're only hitting one or two sections of the thrift store. Yeah. So I think it's important to remember that we all live in different areas and we all have different access to different stores and different items within those stores. So you really got to look at what access do you have? Do you have like a really great, I don't know, shoe section where you're constantly able to get shoes all of the time? If so, niching down to shoes may be great for you. But if you're like us and your thrift stores can be hit or miss and you don't have a ton in a close enough distance that you can frequent, it would be behoove you to be able to get the most out of those stores when you go. Because as we all know, listing consistently is super important. And in order to do that, you need to be able to find as much as possible when you go out. Uh, so the next is the opposite of finding something that you're passionate about. If if you're just getting bored with the same old, same old, and you're doing everything the same over and over and over again, that can just turn into everyone's nightmare. At least my my nightmare is sitting there doing the exact same thing forever. Yeah. Uh, so variety is a spice life. So mix it up and shake it up and learn a new category. Yes. So as you guys know, for me, I don't like fashion. I don't. I. I mean, look, <laughs> wearing, I, I'm not. That's the height of fashion. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's adorable, about? right? Um, yeah, I'm not a fashion person. I, I don't really care. And it just, I really wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to own my own business. And that is what started this. So for me, selling clothing all of the time really isn't a passion of mine. It's just, I like to make money. So I always like to learn new things and learn new categories because it keeps me excited about what I'm doing. Every time I sell something that's out of out of the norm for me, I'm so excited and I wanna just source She's again. She's buzzing around the house all day when she sells something that is unexpected, like a DVD, a book, or a uh, plush, uh, hard good. It doesn't matter. It, yeah. As soon as it's the first one to go, that's her new favorite thing. Yeah, and then I just want to source. And usually it works out really well. So it's definitely keeps you excited about your business and keeps you moving. So if you're like me and you're selling to make money and not necessarily selling out of passion, keep it interesting. Just like keep learning. So this next one is related to adapting to the changing environments of reselling. So uh, to take a page out of the real world, uh, you see it time and again, anytime the world changes, the, the animals and the environments that are adaptable are the ones that last. So if you are able to pivot and adjust what you're doing, you're more likely to make it through reselling. Yeah. Uh, we're possibly going into a recession and People may have limited financing. So being able to adapt to the changing circumstances is incredibly important for reselling. Yeah, absolutely. When we first started out, we only sold clothing. And I remember my first year going into the Christmas season, I sell pre-owned clothing and my sales just died. And I was just devastated. I was like, I don't understand what's going on. Other people seem to be doing well. What's different? And what I found out was that a lot of the resellers were pivoting. So they were either pivoting to new attacks clothing and going and doing retail arbitrage, or they were pivoting to hard goods because hard goods are, you know, you can get Christmas items or you can get things that people just need even though it's Christmas season. And I didn't have any of that and I didn't even know what to do. So I wasn't prepared for the season and it just died out. So being able to have different things for different seasons of your business, whether it means, you know, seasons of the year or seasons like the economy, it's it's really important that you can adapt, you can change, and you can make sure that you're still making that money regardless of what the economic climate is. I just think you're better suited to that. Also, if 
if you have a, a niche that you're able to source on a regular basis, that's wonderful, but that may not always be the case. And if you have focused down on something, you've really drilled into it, if things change, which the world changes all the time, you're going to basically have to start from scratch, where if you already have a generalized knowledge base, you're a step up from starting from the bottom. Right. And it just, it's just, it's an easier process to, to change things over. The next one is to drive traffic. So you, you've you noticed this quite a bit. Yeah, no, bit. this one might be specific to us. I, I don't know. But as we've said, we're in a constant fight with eBay. eBay, do, I, don't, I don't know. They don't like us? I don't know. But because of the fact that we sell clothing, it, it's pretty common knowledge that eBay isn't necessarily the best place for clothing. That You get lower prices and there's just a lot more competition. Yeah. So we notice that the more we have DVDs and books in our store, the more traffic comes to our store and then the more clothing we sell. So right now we're noticing an uptick and that's very likely because we have been listing DVDs and books every single day. Yeah. So I think it's really important to look and see what is driving traffic to your store. And if it's outside of your typical category, keep doing that. Don't, don't feel you can't just because it's not part of your niche. Uh, do what's driving traffic to your store because sales beget sales and, and yeah. we all need those sales. So I, I, the algorithm is going to pick up that you're selling items and drive more people to, to your items across the board and not just in that one category. So if you have someone that came for a DVD but it was already sold or it's not quite what they were looking for. They, they have a tendency, people have a tendency to browse. So it's going to be more people looking at the items in your store. The next is it opens you up for more locations. So we had mentioned before that it allows you for the pros to go to more stores. What we're talking about here is that you have access to more stores if you generalize because you can go to that vintage game shop, you can go to that DVD store, you can go to the clothing stores. It just, it opens it up to more possibilities. Yeah, so as we noted before, we have very few thrift stores that we can go to within a day in driving distance that makes sense. So we are now able to open up ourselves to libraries and book sales and DVD shops and all different types of things because our sourcing is more generalized. So we are looking for all types of things. So we're able to try all these different stores we weren't able to try before. Before we were really kind of focused on thrift stores because that was the only option for us. But now that it's opened up, we have even more places that are within driving distance. Garage that we can go sales to. and flea markets even. It just, it, the, the more things that you have experience with, it's going to open up the opportunities to find new places that maybe aren't being looked through by, by the resellers that you're competing with on a regular basis. Uh, and then the last one is that you're going to be missing out bolos if you only target specific sections of the store. So this is separate from the hidden gems that we talked about on the pros because this is related more to the, the life of a reseller. And if you are a reseller, you know that you spend hours and days looking through the store to find 10, 20, however many items, you're spending hours flipping through hundreds, if not thousands of things. So if you're only doing certain categories, you're missing those high ticket items that you would have found if you had gone through the entire store. Yeah, so I mean, there's always gonna be the struggle between is it worth spending the time to find a few extra gems or is it worth it to miss those gems to save time? And that's going to be a struggle that you're going to have to decide for yourself which one you kind of fall into line with. For us, it's better for us to spend the time and find more items because at the end of the day, we, we need the inventory to list and there isn't a lot of other opportunity for us. So it's worth it to spend the time to get the item to then sell. So I don't know. How do you feel? So we're generalists. So like what... So for us, I think uh, a lot of the pros that we've listed don't necessarily really apply to us. I, I do think that the finding the hidden gems, specializing would apply. I do think that a lot of it would help us. Our problem is that we don't have the volume because we tried for two weeks to go every day to the stores. We went to several stores in the area and we found one DVD a day and that does not a business make. Yeah. We would not be able to do that. If you remember in that experiment, I within day one opened up our categories to more than DVDs because I could not just justify going and finding one DVD after four stores. I couldn't justify it. So we did open it up and we still only came out with four to five items maybe per day and those were on the good days. So it wouldn't have sustained a full-time business and we were probably looking at three to four categories every time we went in. 
So that wasn't sustainable for us. So I think for us, we don't have access to enough thrift stores and enough really valuable thrift stores that have a ton of things. We've got a lot of competition in the area. We see resellers all the time. And it just We've run into them at the store and been recognized. We've been run into yeah. just people that are clearly on their phone on eBay. Yeah. It's it's very cutthroat. So for us, even though it would be way quicker to just go in and out, we would not find enough items to support a full-time business. It just wouldn't work for yeah. us. So a lot of the pros, while they're awesome, and I feel like if we lived in a different area of the country, maybe we would be able to do that. It just really wouldn't work for us full time. I, I think that's fair. I mean, if you, you are in one of those areas where you are able to just find dozens and dozens of items every time you go in one specific category because it's not being picked through or you're just the first one there. Or you have a ton of thrift stores in your area where you can, if you niche down, you can hit a bunch of places. That's amazing. And that's something I would definitely think would be better for niching. I think it just would save you aggravation if that's something you can do. But again, it's just not in the cards for us no. in our location no. currently. Unfortunately, no. So I'm really curious. If you guys are a niche seller, because I know we have a lot of niche sellers that follow us, let us know in the comments below how you do. And and I am including clothing as a niche. If that is just your full-time business, that's awesome. Let us know how you're doing with that. And if you sell something else, I'd be really curious to hear what you sell and how, you, how you're doing. How do you find it? Do you like niching down? Are you hoping to be more generalized? I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, I would be interested to see the, the conversation of your own personal pros and cons compared to ours to see if there's something that we missed or something that you think it deserves a little bit of extra emphasis uh, and importance. So please let us know. But one thing I want to make sure you guys take out of this before you walk away is make sure that you're running this business the way you want to run this business, not because somebody on Instagram, not because somebody on TikTok, not because some couple on YouTube told you to. Run it how you want to run it and enjoy your business because it's yours at the end of the day. But that is everything. So thank you all for watching.